and welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB, but it is Friday, Friday. We play Brawl on Friday, and this is another competitive historic Brawl list coming to you with a new commander out of alchemy. I'm going to trigger everybody in this intro, and I'm telling you straight up, I'm having fun. So I don't care, because what we're playing today is an alchemy commander from the Brothers War Alchemy, and I still have a lot of feels about alchemy, but when they make sick cards that I wouldn't get to play otherwise, the feels become a little more positive. And this is one of those, Rusko Clockmaker, two and a blue, black, three, three, when it enters the battlefield, you make a midnight clock. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, you put an hour counter on each permanent you control named Midnight Clock. And each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. What a sick artifact commander. If we had a way to maybe untap those artifacts over and over and then cast a bunch of spells, we could completely drain our opponent out. Uh, yeah, that's right. So... Paradox Engine, baby. We're doing another Paradox Engine combo, but... More than probably most of my Paradox Engine combo decks, this one doesn't need the engine. It really can just win the game through the card advantage that Midnight Clock generates. It is hard to explain how good this card is. When I first played it, I was like, yeah, that looks kind of fun. But then you realize, if they kill Rusko, you just play a land and you cast him again because it has that Golos effect of you get another mana source and you get another mana source. And then as the game goes on, if they don't get rid of those clocks... You're gonna draw seven. And when you draw seven, oh, that's a lot of cards. That is really powerful. It makes it so hard to deal with. And even if you don't combo off, just the constant barrage of uh, both answers to the opponent's threats and pressure from you just casting spells, it adds up, the life gain adds up, the drain adds up. I don't know how many times playing this commander, I looked up and their life total was eight and I'm like, when did that happen? It just happens from playing uh, non-creature spells, not even instants or sorceries, non-creature spells. And I'm going to be honest with you guys, part of the reason that this is, in my opinion, one of the more broken historic Brawl decks that you can be playing right now is because it runs three cards in the Demir color pie. It's, it's probably the best Demir Paradox Engine Commander. And when you are Demir, blue and black, you get to run three cards that if I were handed the Historic Brawl format and told, Wizard said, CGB, make our format great and wonderful. You now control the ban list. What would I do on day one? No more questions, no more discussion. It would happen on day one. I would ban Paradox Engine. I would ban Dark Ritual. And I would ban Wash Away. I think those three cards twist the game in such a way that the format itself suffers from it. And I would bet there's a correlation to how often people rage scoop as to when these cards are played, because they're just out of bounds, in my opinion, for the format and the variance level that's acceptable, as well as an end game that is just, if, if you have blue in your deck, your best end game is almost always Paradox Engine. So those are three cards I would ban right away, but they're not banned right now. So we get to play all of them in our two-color deck with a commander that buys us time, creates card advantage, creates mana rocks. It's gross. Now you can blink Rusko. There's a lot of ways to play this deck. You can play full control, just try to counter everything and drain them out. That works. You can play blink where you blink your Rusko. Uh, and you can play combo, artifact combo. I am doing a little bit of all of them. I try to pick the best cards from the, all of those angles and play them together. And by the way, if they ever, if that does happen, if Paradox Engine ever does get banned, you guys are all going to learn quickly how busted Displacer Kitten is because that will become the new focal point of all the combos and you can say what you want it's a two two four mana creature it'll be easy to kill <laughs> keep thinking that all right um for those of you who haven't turned this off out of salt and rage have i got a treat for you because this deck is a doozy it's so much fun to play i've been loving playing it on stream so members get to watch my stream vods uh uploaded here on youtube so if you want to join if you want to be a member and check that out uh check out the membership list uh the little join button right there and then uh 
yeah the last thing i want to say already a long intro because historic brawl intros are long the last thing i really want to say is please support my 100 hour stream of on cgb's christmas magic i'll be live on twitch probably playing a ton of historic brawl so if you love that format you've got to stop by i think i'll even have a donation level where if you hit it you get to choose my next historic brawl build um for over there during the stream -athon. so make sure you check it out and if you don't have time to check out the stream -athon, there is a donate link to extra life before you join, before you do anything else, if, if you want to give back in any way, if you're feeling generous this holiday season, and if you, if you got a small you know spot of warmth in your heart for this hardworking YouTuber who's made videos almost every day, every day since uh, the end of January, then please hit the donate link below for Extra Life because every donation adds a little bit of time to the streamathon. And if we get to the full 100 hours, that'll raise one. That'll raise so much money for charity. It's 10,000. Yeah, we're going for 10,000. Okay, this intro's a long one, but Rusko is worth it. And please check out the subathon and streamathon. It's not a subathon because it's not about subs, it's about donations to charity. But whatever, let's dive in. Let the clock making nonsense begin. We've got three blue sources. We're on the play. We have no ramp. It's a mole. And now we have dark ritual, so it's a keep. Our opponent's playing Rada. So, red green landfall. We have an interesting decision of turn two clockmaker or uh what is that? Turn four citadel? I think we just go for the clock though. Since we have a spark double the very next turn. Let's test our opponent's resolve. Do you like playing against Dark Ritual? It's one of the most busted cards in this little format we have here. All right, they've got Llanowar Elves. Let's go ahead and spark double our Clockmaker. That's a big mana advantage. Prepare the Citadel. Citadel insane with these because we gain life for every spell, non-creature spell that we cast, which means it offsets the damage we take from the Citadel. Maybe they got Rada? Yep, they do have their commander. So this lets them play lands from the top of the library. Rawr! Uh, yes, I'll pay zero for that. Looks fun. Oh my goodness. It's not fair. It's not fair. Power nine. And we're out of gas. Let's defend life total. We're up to 11 on the clock already. <laughs> okay. So that is an example of how busted the deck can absolutely be. Absolutely insane. Our opponent is on the play. We have a good control hand to attack and then take out their key slivers. And we have blood on the snow and they're playing the first sliver. So, uh, you know, take their ramp, kill their sliver, kill their sliver, kill all their slivers. We'll keep that. We start with a Zargoth Sultai Trium. And we get there. I said, take their ramp. There's their ramp. They have Nicole Bolas, the God Pharaoh, hanging out with the Slivers. Don't know what's up with that. And first, Slivers gain Exalted is interesting. Not one I'm used to. All right, they lead on Scuttling Sliver, which says that Slivers can untap Slivers. All right, we go for that throat. Just keep them off the board, I, I guess. They didn't go for the Faceless Agent, though, which is interesting a sliver with an ETB. We'll play Cold Steel Heart. That is our fourth snow source. So Blood on the Snow can get back Roscoe. I always have to remind myself that this makes snow mana. I often forget it's a snow artifact. All right, Agent Seeks. Let's go get a Swamp. You end up with a lot of blue sources because of the clocks. So you often have to remember to fetch more black. 
So we could have held up Tail's End here to try to counter the first sliver, but I think we're letting all that happen so we can blood on the snow. Hopefully Tail's End will catch Bolas. Come on, slivers. Come spar with me. I've been seeing a big uptick of this sliver deck ever since Amy the Amazonian made a video about it. That's been doing pretty well on YouTube. Check out her Brawl Star series if you like more historic Brawl videos. Um, but yeah, I, suddenly I'm seeing the first sliver all the time. It is kind of one of my nemesis archetypes. That is another good card against them. So the opponent not doing anything except for playing a castle and passing. It's kind of weird. I don't know if Karn's actually going to do anything in this matchup at all, but I guess I'll just put it on the battlefield. The cool thing about Karn in this deck is when a midnight clock expires, you can get it back with Karn. We're a little bit early for that, but it's still pretty cool. And I don't want to animate one of these right now to try to block. The opponent might take it out. Are they going to draw with Castle? Five life for a card. Wow. That's a lot. Is that the five colors they need? I think so. And here it comes. The first sliver. So I'm going to do something a little sussy. I'm actually going to counter the cascade, not the sliver itself. I'm going to take all the fun out of it. <laughs> Forget Bolas. I'm not afraid of Bolas. So if I wait another turn, it does give other sliver spells cascade, so we need to kill it. Um, Yeah, maybe we blow up Planeswalkers with this. Maybe I wasn't... Okay, that play was very sus, and now I kind of regret it. But yeah, let's take this out. Give them something else for seven mana that they might do. they do play the Bolas, the Rebirth might get us back the Clockmaker, which would be pretty epic. But yeah, I regret this. I should have just let them cascade into some kind of a sliver. Eight counters on the clock. We're getting close. So over the next two turns, we really want to spend at least some of these cards. I don't think the Verdict is going to matter here unless they go Baby Sliver, Baby Sliver. But I want to get these two cast. Green mana is being produced. Do you have a triple green spell in that deck? Yeah, that card is definitely a sliver. The heck? Sliver Planeswalkers? It is time. Maybe Shadow's Verdict is getting shinier if they make a big creature. Well, but why did they tap so carefully to leave up one black mana? That is very sus. Hopefully it's so that they can cast some kind of a removal spell here on Rusko. Oh, okay. Slivers have flying in haste now. I see you. Good as time as any for a Shadow's Verdict, I guess. No attacks. Sure. 9. This would go to 10. Their turn 11, our turn 12, which would mean Blood on the Snow never gets cast. Right now, Blood on the Snow for Planeswalkers, though, isn't great. I think I'm just going to end up triggering it this turn. So let's play you. Make sure we tap it for mana. Play you. I meant to power this up and attack with it, but I tapped it. I definitely did things wrong here. That was a big mistake. I could have killed this Ren and Seven with a powered up Midnight Clock. I 
kind of hope they remove it. I need the blood in the snow to blow up Planeswalkers if they play Bolas. Or I need to draw it again. The Shuffler is fine. I'll draw blood on the snow again. I have nothing to worry about. Ah, oh, yes. Casualties of war. You get in the gar in that graveyard. That's where you belong. Our opponent must be a true sliver master. They are deep in the tank on these decisions. I, to be fair, should have tanked a little harder last turn. Could have killed that Wren. Bolus? Other Bolus? They really are Planeswalker slivers. Holy cow. But what are you doing with it? Kill Karn. Okay. No timeouts left, opponent. You're gonna have to do something. Uh, okay. So tap this for mana before it goes away. Take our new hand. We did not get blood on the snow back. Uh, in fact, this hand is not great. It'll be okay, though. Don't have any way to use the mana, so we burn that. What do we do? We do have two legendaries and relics, so we're really close to doing nutty things with Paradox Engine. We're definitely going to kill Bolas here. I would love to have Memory Lapse open. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, one. Okay, Plain Shieldred does that. Relic uh, can tap Sheldred for mana and tap itself for mana to memory lapse the bolus. This is also a big strain on the black market connection, and our opponent is down to nine. So they are in a lot of danger from their own enchantment here. And yeah, they take the least painful road, but you do still have to choose one. They're at least going to lose one life for a treasure every turn. And they get drained by Rusko as well. So they are really close to dead. That's why Sheldred still makes the cut in this deck. That and all the life you can gain when the clock goes off. But this Ren shouldn't be here. We should be further ahead than we are. But sometimes you mess up and the game goes on. Here comes a tree. Here comes a sliver. Let's see what it cascades into. Right off the top, it is Maskwood Nexus. Um, do, do have the mana to activate it. Okay. Definitely an interesting card there. Doesn't work with their Planeswalkers. Do we memory lapse this? I don't think so. <laughs> Opponent, you don't have timeouts. You gotta move. Journey to Eternity on that. Uh, we'll send that to the top. Solve the equation. Do I have the mana to do? Yeah, I, I have the mana to do the worst possible. I think they're just dead anyway, but this locks it up. All that thinking. Back in your hand. And we swing. Holy cow. Took on Sliver, Planeswalker, Bolus, Master, and came out the victor, even though I made some little goofs there. This year, I'm celebrating Christmas by doing a 100-hour streamathon called CGB's Christmas Magic, a streamathon supporting Extra Life Children's Miracle Network Hospitals. We're raising money for a good cause. If you're watching this video, please pause it. Honey, honey, come here. CGB is doing a 100-hour streamathon event for Christmas. What? I know. Are you serious? I can't believe it! He's actually doing it! He's gonna do it! No way! A hundred hours no straight! Oh. And go check out the link to Twitch in the description. If I'm live right now, say hello in the chat and consider donating to Extra Life. You guys have been so kind to me, so please, Cool Kids Club, help me do something nice 
for some other people who really need it. Merry Christmas, happy holidays. Now back to the video. We go first with Dark Ritual again. Our opponent on Vavictus Asmati the Dire. Looks like a fun kind of chaotic dragon deck. Probably not prepared whatsoever for the hell we unleash with Rusko, the Clockmaker. But we'll see. I have seen Jun decks do crazy things, but they're usually Corvold. Temple Scry bottom. Dark Ritual Clockmaker. The funny thing is, our hand doesn't do much from here. We might Tails End something. We might Witness Protect something, but we are a ways away from Time Warp Verdict or any of those cards really mattering. We do, however, get way ahead on the board in Life Total Pressure. Don't think I have a one mana artifact to go get, but I do have a zero. I have Mox Amber. I might just do that. Clane? Sure. Might as well pay the one. They're not going to mana tithe or censor me. I don't think I have a one, but just in case. I already, you know, I forget what's in my own deck sometimes. Uh oh. They've got responses? They're going to kill the clockmaker. Okay. So, uh, that is really good for them because now our Mox Amber doesn't work. And we need to hit a land here. Okay, we got some land. We're doing okay. Go ahead and uh, hide these. Name black, because we'll always have plenty of blue when the clockmaker is doing its thing. If it's their commander time, they'll probably end up scooping if they see Tail's End, but could also Tail's End the Evolving Wilds trigger to be nasty. Shovel. Hmm, Shovel? Sure. Why not? And a Cold Steel Heart. I think I'll just witness protect the shovel. Here's Roscoe. I guess I'll hold up the removal instead. I'll get marked by a bounty counter, but it is what it is. Yep. Dragon go home. Ooh, aggressive. It's pretty strong take against my deck, which is it, it wears your life total down way faster than you expect. Yeah, they don't want to see any more after that time warp. I understand. Sometimes that card is saltier and quicker scoop than a paradox engine. We go first. Our opponent has Bolus in the command zone. Inquisition could take their ramp, and we have the Immortal Sun, which shuts Bolus down. But the, the risk of this hand just not drawing enough land and doing nothing for a period of time is way too high, so we have to mulligan it. And now we've got ramp and three lands, so it's a keep. One of the little tips to this deck is don't use the opt on turn one unless you need land. Use it the turn that you play Rusko. I'm going to name blue here, even though the clock makes blue. I already have two swamps. We didn't counter the signet, but that's okay. I think. I think it'll be fine. And the opponent doesn't have wash away, thank goodness. 
But yeah, once you when you opt with the clock out, you get an extra tick and you get an extra drain. So you get just more value out of your card. Here's an annul target. Ramp and deramp. Name of the game. Caravan. Hit him. They're in the bind. If they kill the clockmaker, it's not that big a deal. Hmm. But that is going to take wash away or opt, which is not great. I love wash away for the one mana ness, but I think we'll just play it here. Try to keep Urtai in the hand as something that can't be duressed. Don't need the dark ritual here. Oh, no. What a draw. Ah, witness protection. No, thanks. But <laughs> Bolas takes a look at Bolas's own Citadel, and that is enough for the scoop. Wow. We are on the play with another sweet hand and ramp, so we keep... We might not thought seize though. I, oh, am I? I feel like I'm supposed to thought seize on turn one. The problem is then the tap land later means maybe the clockmaker doesn't happen. So I think I'm playing this tapped. We'll put that on the bottom. Don't think that is quite what I need against Jaxus. Maybe it is, but probably not. Jaxus, an interesting build. Commander with Blitz. Another tapped land. But we're on pace. We are on pace to drop a clockmaker next turn. Big spender that has haste. And whenever it gets blocked, it makes a treasure. Okay. I think we just go to the clock. No messing around here. The Nightmare is a really good solution to the Spender. Broken Brow. Haven't seen you in a few. Ooh. Just... All right. Spender doesn't get in there. Do we want to block Broken Brow? I think I'm going to do this Brainstorm. If I have an untapped land, I might. And I definitely do. Yeah, I think that's just a block here. Opponent gets a treasure. We get a trade. And they have a trap finder. When it dies, seek a creature, mana value three or less. It perpetually gains haste, two less to cast, and at the beginning of your next end step, sacrifice it. Probably a pretty good card with Jaxus. All right, keep it coming. Develop the mana. I think that's how you play this. But we'll see. Battle Cry Goblin. Just going ham? Yeah. Just going in. And they get another treasure if I block. And if this dies, they get a pretty cool quest. I guess I'll take this out. All right, we could go for Citadel, which would be very bold, but very strong. And might just end the game if we hit well. I believe in us. That is a card. Holy crap. That is a card. Like I said, if we hit well, this doesn't gain life. Let's uh, be... Oh, actually, this should end it. As long as they don't, and I don't think they do, have a lightning bolt.
So every time we use a, a kitten loop here, we get another clock. The clocks keep ticking up. We're gaining a life and draining a life every time. Let's run the trophy mage. We can get the tome, which we don't even really need, to be honest. We've got a clock on nine. There's a time warp. But we don't have the life to play it yet. We can also be flickering key to the archive, which is also very degenerate. All right, clock is on 10. And soon we're going to get to the point where we're just shuffling up our hand through every cycle. So we're on 11, so we have to turn on full control now, which is, I'm not gonna lie, it's a bit cringe when you're ahead by this much. We're gonna go to one, because why not? So if we wanna get max value here, before this goes to 12, we have to uh, tap it for mana. <laughs> And then we have to put on the stack anything else that's in our hand here. And then respond to each paradox trigger. As you can see, it's very honest gaming because what we're going to do is actually go through these uh, midnight clock activations a few times. <laughs> so like we're paused here, right? And now we've got this time warp on the stack. So we get the extra turn. And now we've got another one on 10. Opponent being an absolute sport for playing it with us. I'm going to take it off now that I've shown you kind of what min maxing is with this deck, putting it on full control to make sure that you respond to every trigger. I'm going to turn it off because I don't think it will actually matter in how well we win the game. But some people love min max and uh, hopefully they enjoy that a little. As you see, they're like without the full control on, they're not going to give us a window to respond when the clocks start going off together. Our opponent's at 11, so we just need enough spells to kill them. We also have Bolus's Citadel, which can, I believe, use all these clocks as permanent so they're down to 10 and now we can just activate this and just pick off all these clocks <laughs> uh they served us well Jax is maybe the troublemaker but i feel like i caused the most problems we are up against lagrella the magpie a blink deck we are on the play the witness protection isn't good against a blink deck. They'll find a way out of it very easily. The rest of the hand is good if we draw land and bad if we don't. Uh, do we just keep this and see if there's a land in the top two? I think that's risky when we could just take the free mulligan. And who knows, we might hit a ramp spell. We don't. Mm, this isn't great either. It's playable, but it's not great. Opponent took their free mulligan as well. I guess I'll keep it. The vortex can at least stave off their ramp. But not having ramp, hand disruption, or hard removal ourselves, and having a Karn in a matchup where I'm not sure if it will be good. Very sussy. We did draw Tail's End. Tail's End is really good against Blink. All right, they haven't done anything. That's reassuring. And we draw Trophy Mage. I guess I'll play it. So when I play Trophy Mage in this deck, 
If I have a setup where Tome of Legends like wins the game or I'm against another control deck, sure, I will go get Tome of Legends. But usually I just get the clock because midnight having multiple midnight clocks with Rusko is so already awesome. Synergizing with the commander. And they're going to play Tokazia's Welcome. Whenever one or more creatures man value three or less, enter the battlefield, draw a card. Triggers once a turn, but once is enough, believe me. All right, so for this, let's hit our land drop untapped. Let's play our clock. Let's hold up Tail's End. And tick tock. So very clear to the opponent, or it should be, that we have a counter here. They go for it. Let's slow that down. That might have been intentional. Uh, really smart Brawl players often run their commanders into counter spells because they're a renewable resource. They're not gone forever like a lot of the other cards in their deck would be. Now here, does our opponent have swords? Uh, humiliation. I've got a surprise for you. I also can blink. I bet they have that card in their deck. So that's two clocks. <laughs> two clocks too painful. Opponent will scoop. We have Mox Amber in our opener, which is okay, but not really the ramp we're looking for since our legendary costs four. We also have Wash Away, Bind, and Commit. This is a weird hand. I'm going to keep it. Our opponent has the Sliver Hive Lord, which is scary because we might get run over by slivers here. What is, are their sleeves? The pilot? Yeah. I'm going to try to hold back the Amber until I play Rusko because it's another trigger. Oh my gosh. I am too good at magic. This is so... <laughs> See... Dark Ritual. Dark Ritual might be a problem. <laughs> My hand just went from z from like a 3 to a 10. Just like that. One card out of the 99 ripped off the top. Here comes a sliver. And it is a good one. Flying in haste is very dangerous. I don't know if we play Karn, though. Wash Away isn't going to hit here. I think we hold Karn. This is an interaction turn. Bind to Secrecy can conjure duplicate of a creature card in an opponent's graveyard into your hand. It's kind of a wacky card. And then there's even more text that was probably completely unnecessary. But basically, it's a modal negate. The other mode is to counter things. All right, if they're going to do nothing, I'll pick on their Cloud Shredder Sliver. And now we can play a Protected Karn. We may as well, just for the clock trigger. Oh, wait. I could have killed their land. <laughs> as it is, they can't tap it for mana. I did, I kind of missed that. Well, this will probably get them to concede. Shut down their Cultivate. In a Sliver deck, they probably have a lot of creatures. <laughs> Stone Rain you. <laughs> I'm a monster. I am a monster. <laughs> I even missed that the first time. I didn't realize I had an artifact land out there. Oh, uh, that's just me. I'm, it's not enough for me to be degenerate paradox gamer. I also have to be a stone rainer. And I think it actually, they locked the game. Their concession locked the game. I'm stuck here in this game. It looks like I'm going to have to, uh, what is it? Alt F4 or something. Looks like I'm going to have to close out the client. All right, we're on the play against the dragon engine. We have no ramp. The witness protection might be good when the time comes. We do get an opt. We are on the play. I think there's enough here. I mean, is there though? We don't really do anything for the first several turns. I'm really just relying on this opt to be good. 
I'm always down for a mystery box opt, aren't I? We draw one land and we opt into another, and then we see what happens. But it's going to be a very slow go here, unless we hit Dark Ritual or a ramp. That was easy. Just so many good hands with this deck. Let's go on black. If we top deck the land, we've got the Clockmaker on the play, right where we want to be. Our opponent's also ramping. I wish they'd just put ramp and growth on arena. You know, some of the other ramp cards that we don't get to play. Well, man. <laughs> I don't know what's going on today. I, I don't know if it's Rusko. I don't know if it's like I paid for arena premium and it's kicking in. I don't know what's going on, but I am drawing so perfect. It's kind of nauseating for the video. Maybe the deck is just the perfect mix. You always wonder when you're building a deck, is there a perfect mix that I could have? And if I had it, I would never be mana screwed. I would draw very well. Unleash the Inferno. Seven damage and then excess damage destroys the clock. This might be the best answer to Rusko I've ever seen. And we have the perfect response. Yeah, nice. I am... Opponent, I'm sorry. I am a load of nonsense. Uh, take the Veto, I think, or the Asika. Asika, the Prismatic Bridge, actually. A problem. I'll let them keep their Veto. I I have a old rivalry with the Prismatic Bridge. niv it Reborn, nice. Let's drop the Shieldred. play the consider now make sure that we get all the value here no instant speed interaction and we do hit the land drop so that was the idea so they can cut the clock maker but we just replay it and get a new clock might be all they can do though you need an untapped land here to niv miz it it is absurd how quickly this deck just takes over games I mean, our opponent had ramp on turn two, the perfect four mana answer on turn three, couldn't do anything about it. And now here on turn four, it just seems like they're so far behind. They're trying to figure out, do I hold up veto? Do I cut the clockmaker? If I cut the clockmaker, they just play it again. It's not like it actually progresses things. What they don't know is about commit. If I have to replay the clockmaker, I can't play the commit. So they just pass. Um, <laughs> I could slam a Paradox, but then I don't have mana for commit. So we'll just attack and hold up commit, and that will probably be game. As they fall to six. If they have the untapped land here, they can veto. It's a tapped land. They didn't want to pay the two life. And that's game. Wow. Uh, that was nasty. <laughs> and and that was without even... The, the only degenerate thing there we did was blink our commander in response to the removal spell. And of course, Shieldred's no slouch either. It's the mirror. The mirror. Uh, we'll keep a swan song and an infernal grasp. Hopefully this will hit a dark ritual that the opponent will surely have. We have the Paradox Engine now, which is a liability if they have Thoughtseize. But it can also just win the game. No ramp is scary, especially if they do have it. But Urtai, if we're on the play and neither player ramps, countering Rusko is one of the better solutions. Countering Rusko is really the best solution to Rusko. If it hits the battlefield, you just create too many problems with one card especially in a control matchup. All right, it's a staring match. We wash away a really good draw. Oh, mana starved. Oh, that's not good. What is this? The new card, Penrigon Besieged. It's a good card against like creature decks. I haven't tested it much yet though. We could run Rusko right into their counter magic here. They're not in a good position to respond, but they're discarding a hand size. And if they don't hit their land drop, just let them continue to discard to the hand size. It's like getting virtual card advantage. 
Oh, they go for the idol. Okay. I don't want to draw them into... I really, really don't want to draw them into more. So, now we get our clockmaker down. We gotta hold up Wash Away and Swan Song, but I don't think we need both. Let's get the tap land out of the way. All right, four lands. Rusko, nope. Wash Away busted. And I think we just get our engine down, even though we're far from going infinite. The deck doesn't really remove it. And now we have Swan Song open and not Urtai, but I think that'll be okay. They don't have Rusko this turn. Ooh, they have a Gilded Lotus. That is a lot of mana. Definitely solves their issue. I see why they kept their hand, even though they didn't have three lands. Oh, no. Oh, no. With Paradox on board? They've got to counter this. And then they have to have another counter to get past Swan Song. Tails end. Do they have it? They have Mystical Dispute. All right, the game continues. We are up to eight on the clock. Make it nine, going to 10. If we untap and just cast these removal spells, we'll wheel the clock. But the opponent has a lot of mana now and they're going key to the archive. It feels like they're in this. But the clock, the hand I get from the clock is might be the tipping point of the game. If it's all lands, they can probably win. They can get rid of Siren's Ruse, another blink card that costs two mana. They power word kill Rusko. Maybe they have a counter to stop him on the way back. Maybe. Up to 10. Do we go for it? We have two mana open. They counter the Rusko. We can play it again the next turn as well. Yeah, we go for it. Not to mention we untap the clock and we can put mana into it to wheel it if they try to deal with it. Yep, they have their wash away. This is fine. So there's the tick. Opponent doesn't respond. So now if they try to do something to it, we can respond by activating it. Put a stop on our upkeep since we're about to wheel. They go for their own Rusko. On the stack. Go for the throat. If they counter it, we do get the untap from the engine. Okay. Yeah, they counter it. But the clock is still on the stack, so they don't get the tick on the clock. And again. Yeah. Nice. They now have their Midnight Clock, and they have a Thassa, which I can't get rid of. I can play this Urtai to counter their own Clock Tick, but they draw a card, which I think is too good. I'm just going to float the blue and shuffle the Urtai away. That is not great. Not by a long shot. There's a Relic. Opponent is tapped low. They can probably do something about this, though. This is not a great hand. We could lose. We could definitely lose. Ah, they only have one card left. But then when they play this... Mm, I think the right play is the Relic. And pass and try to interact with their Rusko some more. Because when that hits the battlefield, the Thassa is going to be like takeover time. Man, what a rough seven. We've got all this mana. Of course they're going to go for it. If they had my Paradox engine, we <laughs> this game would be like over. Should 
Should've used the relic just in case. My bad. Interesting choice here on Rusko. Command zone or top of deck. If I make them shuffle their library and they know I have cards that can do that, their commander is gone. And they have a ton of mana, so I wouldn't be surprised if they took the commander tax. Yeah, they take the commander tax. All right, we're stalling, baby. The, oh, the wish claw. If that gets tomed, do we just win? Actually, Karn is probably better. Again, I forgot to use the relic. What's wrong with me? They say good game. Do they think I'm going for Tome? Tome there isn't infinite because I only have one mana rock. So, it, I yeah, what I was going to do is get Karn. And then you play Karn and they can't use the Wish Claw. Karn can get back a clock and then their artifacts don't work. So then they can't pay the Rusko tax. But if they have any way to remove the Karn, if they draw a way to kill the Karn, or they get enough devotion on Thassa to attack the Karn, then they're in a great position with their own Wish Claw Talisman that they can use to go get Tome and win. So I think that that scoop assumed something that wasn't quite true. That's a hand. A very good one, including the Immortal Sun and Blood on the Snow against Hawatli, Radiant Champion, which is sure to be a creature deck con led by a Planeswalker. So we'll keep it, even though it has no ramp. They're going to fetch up a land. No snowman lands. I think we're in brainstorm position. I'm going to wait on the pathway. Well, maybe if I'm going to brainstorm, let's just do it now. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, we found our land. Um, I can play this and scry this turn. Do I want to scry one of these lands to the bottom? Am I drawing too many of them? One, two, three, four, five, six, and then a clock is seven. So we don't need seven. Let's put the the pathway can be blue. Do we have enough snow? We want to have four snow lands. One, two, three, four. So we're going to put back the pathway and one of the swamps. We're going to put the pathway on top. We're going to scry it away. Like that. Okay. Sorry. Little bit of brain activity there. Had to fire up the the intelligence center. What the hell is that? When it enters the battlefield, creature cards perpetually get plus one plus one and it specializes. Whoa. Into a three three lifelink. Or or a four four green ox. Oh, when it dies. It becomes a four four that when it dies, you make a four four green ox. Fun, specialize, we. I learned something today. The good news is if they discard a card to specialize, Drown in the Lock will kill it. I'm trying to get better about actually figuring out what the alchemy cards do. Uh, the specialized cards, I should say. The alchemy cards, there are a lot of good alchemy cards and bad alchemy cards like any other thing, but um, I'm trying to get better at the specialized cards, not just refusing to read them. <laughs> refusing to read them hasn't done any of us any good, so why bother? Why fight that fight that way? All right. Clock making. Making clocks with wash away available. What a brutal combo. Gonna see here if the opponent plays around the wash away. They do not. They do not. <laughs> no commander. And now we're saying on Immortal Sun, which can shut it down forever, and River's Rebuke, which is rude. And Blood on the Snow, which completely devastates them. It might be the play here. If I play the Immortal Sun, they'll probably just remove it. I really do want Drown in the Lock to protect it. I'm just going to rebuke them now, even though they get pretty good value from it. Just the setback. 
Then if they redeploy those, we blood in the snow, get back the clockmaker, make another clock. Then we play Immortal Sun with Drown in the Lock to protect it. Night of Autumn. Okay, well, it, it takes out the clock, but it didn't take out the Immortal Sun. That's good. Witness protection. Two cards in grave. Let's do the blood and the snow trick. And Ross goes back with the new clock. We want to have that clock ticking. Opponent has a full grip though. Just need to draw one more land for Drown in the Lock protection on the Immortal Sun. Scoot Swarm. Ah, I might need that blood on the snow back. Two swarms. I didn't expect them to turn into a landfall deck out of nowhere, and they hold mana up. They hold mana up, huh? That is not fine. I guess here, Immortal Sun is protected by Memory Lapse. But these Scoot Swarms might just take over the game. And this is my window to get rid of them. So... How about this? I guess I do this on their turn since they're holding up some kind of protection. Let's see if they block with legitimate business Swarm. They do. One more card in the graveyard, I suppose. All right, pass. Got something. Force it. Jeez, they hate my clocks. I hate them. All right, well, this for sure. None of that. If I memory lapse this, not much is going to happen from it. So they're just going to draw it and do it again. It is a good strategy, though, to get rid of the clocks. It's the best way to manage this deck, in my opinion. Okay. To the top with that thing. Here is the Immortal Sun. See if they have more artifact and enchantment removal. We've gotten them to play two. And we've limited one of their draw steps. They have even more. I don't know what to say. But it's a good meta deck that runs a lot of artifact hate. If you don't want to lose to Paradox Engine, play things that blow up Paradox Engine. Okay. Yep. That works too. I didn't expect that. All right. You're back. Unfortunately, we can't Thought Seize the Tender Shoot. But I still think it's important to get this back on the board. They are at 12. And the sooner this starts ticking, the sooner it draws seven. Clement is back. Skyclave. Skyclave on the clock? No. Uh, take action. Yes, you have to take action. Or it stays exiled forever. Thoughtseize still in the hand. That might be a mistake. I thought getting the engine down would be a good move to do more things next turn, but I don't have a way to make black mana off the engine. God, eternal Oketra. So I'll get one more shot at this tender shoot Dryad, but this makes a 4-4 whenever they cast a creature. And if there's one thing I think I can tell about their deck, they play a lot of creatures. All right, tap like this. Thought sees you. Uh, Drizdord and also very strong. Both of these very dangerous. I guess this is the most power and toughness right up front. Oh, how are we going to get out of this? I 
I could draw with the Mind Stone. This is a huge turn cycle. Like, our next draw is going to be so important. I could tick the clock, or I could draw with the Mind Stone. They are at 12, and we do have creatures. Like, this is 10 damage. Two spells, and they're dead if they're not careful. They're going to play Hawatli, which says... Plus one, plus one, where X is the number of creatures you control, or loyalty up. They're going to loyalty up to seven. So what's their aggression like? Just Oketra. We can definitely hit her with the creature lands. This is okay. Although it hurts very bad. Okay, 12 to 12 is not as okay as I would like. Let's level up. Big draw. It's a caravan. It's mana neutral, and it gets us to 8 on the clock. It gets us to 13 life, to 11. <sighs> okay, 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 okay. Draw. Make it good. Oh, oh, oh man. Oh my. One of the decks unsung heroes striking here. And we're at nine. With a faceless haven. So this goes to 10, 11, 12. We can get to seven on their next turn. I think we just let this be. I don't think we attack Hawatli here. I think we take... Man, we can get them so close to dead. But I think we just do nothing here. We take the ticks. We count on the fresh seven to do the job. The Haven might jump in front of the Oketra. Here comes the Dryad. Watley can make the God Eternal Ketra huge. If they had a way to make it unblockable, we'd lose. But don't think that's what's up. Loyalty counter. Okay, Watley at 11. Faceless Haven, Cultivator's Caravan, or Rusko. I think it's the Haven. We could also just take it. If they have a giant growth, we'd lose. <laughs> All right, that's not worth it. All right, my turn. Untap. Triggers on stack. Tap for blue, then wheel. Oh, baby. Is that a River's Rebuke I see? All right. I guess we wait till our main phase. Just burn this mana. Also, that's a tome. That's game. That is definitely game. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Yep, uh, from there, it's academic, uh, but that was really close. Our opponent did play a good, solid amount of artifact removal, the night and the return to nature, and the hour of revelation even getting the job done when it needed to to get rid of the immortal sun. That's what you got to do to compete with these decks. In the end, they fell, but it was very close. And we are back for a quick post-game wrap, and my record with this deck... That is not a typo. That is not an accidental number placement. 53 and 6. 53 and 6. It has been stupid 
how busted this deck has been. And I remember like the day this came out and I played this commander. At first I was getting paired against, you know, what I would call like D to to like C rank commanders in in kind of the casual queue and then as we played it more and as we won more and more on the stream you saw us now we're getting Kenrith now we're getting Golos now we're getting Emery you know and it was like ranking up and I honestly um, think that this deck just clowns on anything less than a totally serious historic brawl build so it might be it is not just a hell queue contender. I think they need to put it in hell queue as soon as possible. I don't know if anybody, you know, actually takes care of the algorithm anymore at Wizards of the Coast for Historic Brawl. It seems a little abandoned sometimes by the weird matchups that we get. But I do know that when you play Kinnon, Kinnon still plays against Golos and Kenrith and Teferi and Baral. I think Rusko needs to play in that field. And if it ever does, if you find that Rusko is getting paired up against those decks, then you do need to adjust your cards. You need to add Dispel and Miscast. You need to add cheap removal like Cutdown and Fatal Push and Blood Chief's Thirst to take out the Kinnon very early on. You know that? And the Mana Dorks. And you can adjust the deck in that direction. But um, for, the, for now, I found these builds to be very, very powerful. Absolutely able to take care of whatever the opponent puts in front of us. It's a tier, it's an S tier commander uh, until proven otherwise. I haven't been 53 and six with a historic brawl commander in a long time. That shows you that it is not getting the respect it deserves from the current matchmaking algorithm for historic brawl. So play it until they ban it or take it away, but specifically like Paradox, Engine, Dark Ritual, and Wash Away. The, the three, in my opinion, most broken cards in the format in one deck. But hey, You've stayed till the end, and uh, here at the end, I want to say one more shout out to the streamathon. Please uh, hit the link in the description. It, you can just donate. Uh, there's a donate link right there. If you use it, it will add time to my streamathon to hopefully get me to the full 100 hours. The way it works, every donation, even a dollar, adds time to the streamathon clock. And when the streamathon clock gets to 100 hours, I have to complete the full 100 hours in a row. If you have any inkling or curiosity then please click the twitch link because i should be live during these 100 hours so stop by stop by in the chat say hello if you have uh, a spare screen a computer screen or an ipad screen you can leave the stream running in the background that actually helps because twitch the more people you have it, the more people it shows that are viewing you the more they push you in their algorithm viewers is the only thing they care about so uh yeah um just stopping by really helps i need my youtube army behind me on this one Part of me is terrified that I won't actually raise enough money to fill the 100 hours. Um, so, yes, uh, anything. If, if you, I have brought you any joy this year, it would really, really mean a lot to me if you would help support the Streamathon. Thank you for watching this video. As always, I will see you in the next video. Tap, untap, tap, untap, tap, untap. You are cool.